Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Sustainability Time podcast, hosted by the University of Victoria Sustainability Project. We are a student-funded organization that promotes sustainable endeavors on and off campus. I'm your host for this episode, Ely, and today I am joined by Sarah and Kate, and we're going to be discussing all things sustainable fashion. So let me just introduce myself real quick. I am a second year geography and economics major at the University of Victoria. I'm also a work study, which is basically in short, a work position with the university. So ladies, do you want to introduce yourselves? Hello everyone, I'm Sarah. I'm very excited to be talking about sustainability today. I am a first year commerce major at UVic and my plan is to create a sustainable fashion company one day and I'm very excited to be educating and talking about sustainability through fashion today. Hi, my name is Kate. Um, I'm a first year student as well. Um, I'm studying biochemistry and like Sarah, I'm also passionate about sustainable fashion and reducing fast fashion and creating a conversation about it. Delightful. Okay, so I have this humongous document. Um, Hopefully, since this is the first podcast, we can make it kind of conversational. So we would like to start off with discussing when you talk about environmental sustainability, you, you often think like plastic free or recycling or, you know, eating less meat or driving less or using less water. But you rarely think about like fast fashion and microplastic pollution and worker rights. So when I think of fast fashion, um, Vogue made a really good point. It's you kind of compare it to like fast food, so it's really cheap, very accessible, accessible, pardon me, and quick. But um, it's actually built on three pillars. The first one being vertical integration, which is when a company controls the production and or is just distrib- and or distribution of a product or service. And communication between designers and consumers is the second pillar, which oftentimes goes along with the data analysis and trend research from the fashion runway. So a lot of the times fast fashion retailers will take inspiration and kind of mirror it um, for to be it for it to be more accessible for consumers to purchase. And then that goes along with the third one, which is the design to retail cycle, which is the seasons between um, which they get on like from the production process on the floor of a market so it's very quick it's a very quick process and um it's called fast fashion because of how quick the process is for consumers to consume yeah and i also find it interesting that um like before the real rise of fast fashion there was like four distinct seasons like obviously the seasons of the year where fashion came out it's like okay this is a spring style this is a winter style but now it's it's basically like a constant stream of stuff coming at you because of the fast fashion because things right. can be produced so 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 quickly um that there's no longer the set um like seasons of style it's just always always new things coming out and it's also not just like you can tell obviously because it's usually produced quickly and cheaply but it's not just like an environmental thing it's also can be like a human's right a human rights thing and um it's like there's so many different facets of it it's just like like there's so many aspects of our lives that are like that just promote consumer culture and just like needing the newest thing all the time and like in the most accessible way and that's why fast fashion is like thrived like so many people We'll sit and complain about oh my god fast fashion is so bad for human rights issues but we're sitting down like supporting it all the time because we're so accustomed to to, to follow um consumer culture because we want the newest things all the time i feel like this also comes a lot from social media because like it's just you see a ton of things on social media and it's always something new that some new influ- influencer is wearing and it's like oh my goodness like that looks cool and then like zara and she and are like boom 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 15 dollar pants just get them now and it's like okay so oh. it's i think it's a big social media thing it's also mm-hmm. extremely embedded in our society and our crave for new products it's really societal. I feel like if you're just dropped into the society, like if from an alien perspective, you would not be buying this many clothes and like following all these trends now because you wouldn't be, you weren't exposed to these type of societal norms. Mm-hmm. 
surprisingly, um, fast fashion or just the fashion industry is actually the world's second most polluting industry with water. Yeah, fast fashion contributes significantly to water, air, and soil pollution as well as deforestation. And I don't think anyone really like understands like how much like that are like significantly used for the dyeing and finishing process of clothing. Like literally twenty thousand liters of water is just needed to produce one kilogram of cotton, and this creates like insane ecological consequences due to scarce resources. So, like. And this also kind of translates into a really good point of how, like, developed countries can kind of, like, sit back and, like, debate about, like, political factors of, of the environment and how, like, we can debate about what's good for the environment and what's not and what initiatives we're taking and what we're not. But people don't realize that people in developing countries are at the forefront of um, environmental degradation and 90% of wastewaters in developing countries are discharged into their water sources. So this poses really big not only environmental issues but also like health issues in developing countries as well yeah i think it's a lot harder for us to really imagine it people can be like oh yeah fast fashion yeah like oh i forgot about that because we don't see our waterways being bleached and dyed and everything i saw this documentary a couple years ago called river blue and they said something like that has stuck with me to this day that it's like a common saying i think in um like I think it was China that you can always tell what the new hottest fashion color is because it's it's the color of the rivers because all that dye is just getting put into wow, the rivers really and cool. I heard about yeah that. it it's crazy to think of and some of those photos and videos are just absolutely like horrific to see that there's no fish in them there's no animals it's just like bright blue or green water the best advice that I was like given is to just use what you have first like so we're so like we're so brainwashed and so desensitized to consumer culture. And it's so important to just like literally open your closet and be like, do I need this white t-shirt when I have four in my closet? It's like a different cut, but like, that's so like, do you need it? Like, no, like there's so many ways to just like, just take a step back in many aspects of like, in your life, not even just like fashion, but in so many different aspects of your life to be like, do I need this? Like, what are the environmental consequences? What are the political consequences? What are the ethical consequences of me purchasing something? Mm-hmm. for sure yeah. another thing to assess is the hidden cost of items like yes let's say you have this pair of jeans and you're like oh that's a really cute pair of jeans and let's say that it's 60 dollars. but like 60 dollars is not the only cost of those jeans the hidden cost is like how much water was taken to get those jeans are, are those workers that made those jeans paid well how was the supply chain how was those jeans brought to you you know like from this country to this country and like the supply of the materials behind those jeans like those are things you have to think about with yeah just, you know like 60 dollars for a pair of jeans is not the only cost right like even just like like everyone like taking a look at the clothing tag in your shirt like where was it made like china bangladesh india like mm-hmm. these mm-hmm. countries are accountable for significant greenhouse gas emissions on the behalf of the fashion industry um and it's really unfortunate to see how a lot of developing countries obviously don't have the resources to kind of use the most green way to do stuff. So a lot of the time, yeah. these countries are essentially powered by coal. And obviously, that's kind of the most detrimental type of energy in terms mm-hmm. of carbon emissions. It's really unfortunate to see how we kind of, quote unquote, exploit these developing countries because it's a really cheap way of doing things. So they don't have very many environmental laws. One really big notable notable thing with sustainable fashion is it comes with a lot of privilege. So, you know, many individuals, for example, students or anybody that's in an income group lower than honestly middle to high are unable to just go out and buy a $50 organic cotton t-shirt from like a sustainable brand they really support. Like I would I would love to do that. I would love to support my favorite sustainable brand, but I'm a student and I can't really do that unless I'm saving up for it. And then I could also like go to a thrift store, but I'm not comfortable with going to a thrift store during a pandemic because, you know, my mom has underlying health issues and I would not want to put her at risk just because I want a new clothing item. So it comes with, it comes with a lot of privilege. I mean, I guess, I guess nowadays it's good that like Facebook marketplace is starting to 
really like rise so then you can do like contactless pickups also another thing is a lot of people aren't aware of like the this is not be condescending at all because i only know a, a little bit about fast fashion like it's not like i'm some expert it's just i i've realized that oh my goodness like this is crazy and i had no idea what they're doing this it's it was like kind of like a oh my god moment when i figured out that like this these jeans that i'm buying are like so polluting and lots of people just don't know that because it's not something that's widely broadcast okay i relate to that so much like i think during the pandemic i was like purging my closet and i was like you know selling some items or donating some items and then i just remember like me in high school i would buy like so many like obnoxiously cheap clothing items from forever 21 because you know when you're in high school you want to do what like the other girls are doing you want to wear exactly the other people that you see on social media are wearing because that's what you're supposed to do mm -hmm. and then it's not until you start to like you know kind of crave more knowledge and just to know more about these type of things is when you realize that what you've been doing the whole time was you know not the best thing to do you know like yeah the popularity of thrifting i'm so 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 happy that thrifting has kind of become i'm not gonna say a trend because hopefully it stays but i'm very happy with it because it's such yeah. a good resource for people and you can find great things like it's also <laughs> like so fun just to see like what you can find as well it's like a whole I'd adventure yeah. I recently just got a sewing machine, so I'm very excited to see what I can kind of upcycle with that as well, which is something that I highly recommend doing. It's really, really fun. That's it's so, so fun. Like, and it's also, like, not super hard. Like, I'm not a good sewer at all, but I, I recently, mom was like, hey, I have this sewing machine. I was like, you know what? I'm going to try and, like, patch these jeans. I broke the sewing machine. It's fine. Um, but I, like, <laughs> learned a new skill. So, well, sort of, because I wasn't trying Trial and it, error. But exactly you know it's also like a new hobby and you're like creating new items from stuff you already have so you guys you guys know thread up right like the yeah. online thrift store yeah. you know what thread up is and the thing with like any online um thrift store i guess or like you know used clothes kind of system is yes you're like buying or selling used items and you're creating like a circular economy you're diverting stuff from the landfill but the thing is is like there are still emissions with the shipping and handling right of so course, kind of, of course. Like, i'm wondering like, i wonder sometimes i'm like is it better to like do that or is it better like what yeah i think buying secondhand like as a general rule if you're gonna buy something i think it's always better because it's something that's always it's been used and it's already been produced like there's no new materials being used for it um so even if of course the shipping and stuff isn't the best but it's something that's already been created um, right. And you're not having any more production, like energy or water into that. It's just the shipping. And you're usually going to have the shipping if you buy something new anyway. Not always, but. Yeah, you're right. So I'd say, even though it, of course, shipping isn't the best, um, I think it's still a step up from buying something completely new. That's just my opinion. Yeah. And just plugging something in for the listeners um, for shipping. It's the most sustainable if you pick the option that takes the longest. So that mm -hmm. way, the. Um, like the tracking companies, like the, you know, the, the big trucks that like bring your products around, they have more time to plan their routes accordingly. So it takes up like less emissions. Do we want to discuss basically the difference between synthetic and natural fibers for the listeners? Hmm. Yeah. Cause this is something that I didn't know. Like, well, like wash it like since synthetic fat fibers are usually not as not uh, less environmentally friendly um than natural fibers but i didn't know that when you wash them they released all these microplastics yeah oh, yeah i can like do a little blurb on this if you want For sure let's yeah. hear it, it. <laughs> so, this is my list of synthetic fibers um the most common ones are elastane polyester big one is polyester acrylic nylon rayon i think is how you pronounce it yeah rayon. yeah yeah acetate spandex latex and this one i've never heard of it G google said it was synthetic it's called kevlar oh kevlar yeah 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 i haven't heard of it, it. Yeah, but yeah i think it's like i think that's what, like what bulletproof vests are made of don't quote me oh. on that but in that I case you should buy that <laughs> there's a reason <laughs> you're using it 
But yeah, so basically, in short, um, I'm obviously not a professional, but I do do a lot of research on this stuff. When you use a washing machine for, let's say, um, let's say a sports bra, let's say that is made of um, 60% polyester and 40% elastane, because unfortunately, most workout clothes are made of synthetics because it absorbs sweat better. Um, when you put it in the washing machine, you know, it, the washing machine does its business, but and then the little tiny microfibers kind of come off. And I don't know how it is for different like countries, but I know at least in British Columbia, they don't have like a, um, a filter system in our washing machines. I filter mm -hmm. out these microfibers. So these fibers go into our waste system, which go into the ocean and contributes to our ginormous microplastic like problem yeah mm -hmm. that's just like crazy to me because yeah i don't know you don't think of it like once you have a piece of clothing you don't think of it doing damage to the environment once you have it yeah like yeah there's right. all the stuff associated with the production but like once you have it you're like okay i have it not like that it's washing... releasing all these plastics yeah like yeah it's... like washing clothes is like a huge contributor to like your house house's emissions like yeah. That, the amount of water the amount of electricity like it's insane like i try to limit like washing my clothes like once a week but i know that's still like insanely horrible for the environment mm -hmm. which definitely sucks. yeah yeah that's... there is on the bright side some solutions to it so have you guys heard of the guppy friend bag i haven't no do no. tell <laughs> okay mm -hmm. so it is basically this like um it's this pretty big laundry bag and you put all of your synthetic items into that bag and then you just throw into the washing machine. It's similar to like those normal washing machine bags that you put um, delicates in, I guess. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But so you put your synthetics into that bag and then when you finish, you know, when the washing machine finishes, you take the synthetics out and, you know, you dry it and stuff. But then in the bag and like, I think the corner of it, um, you can take out all of the little microfibers of the bag collected so that's one way to prevent that's so smart it's so cool, really cool but i was gonna buy it but it's like kind of expensive but it's it's definitely something if you care a lot about to invest your money yeah. it's an investment for yeah, sure like everyone is. like everyone washes clothes you do it once a week right so yeah, exactly and then i guess another obvious solution is just to wash synthetics less like I don't know where I read this, but apparently we wash clothes much more than we actually need to. Mm -hmm. And especially mm -hmm. with the coronavirus, like, where are you gotta go? Like, if you smell a little bad, who's gonna smell you, right? <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> sure. I, I see I see where you're coming <laughs> from. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for joining us on the Sustainability Time podcast hosted by the University of Victoria Sustainability Project. I hope you all enjoyed that podcast as much as I did. And um, stay tuned for a part two because this is just part one of discussing sustainable fashion. This podcast was edited by Emma Jane Burian and the music is by Hook Sound.